Hi everybody, it's Leanne, Podunk Pretties. Um, I want to come in today and show you how I do raw edge applique. And I'm going to be using um, Aaron Russick's pattern called Home Again. Um, I've gotten her permission to do this. So, um, But what I'm going to do, because I'm waiting on my background fabric. If you um, read yesterday's post, you saw that um, I ordered my fabric for this quilt and it's not here yet so I'm just going to do a little test piece so I can um, share with you guys how I do my raw edge applique so I'm going to isolate this little bird and put her on a do a little project and I picked my fabrics so this will be my bird's body this right here right there and this will be her happy little wing and for her little cheek. You see this little circle right here? The little cheek right there. I'm going to put that pink on there. Now, I've picked out three different fabrics. And I want to show this because um, people ask me how small pieces do I keep for scraps. And honestly, I keep them really, really small. <laughs> um, this piece right here um, came from a friend of mine, Judy, that lives down the road. And she was going to toss it out. And there was these little stacks of all these little pieces, different colors. And I'm like, oh, you know, I can use that. So I'm considering using that as a beak. I haven't made my final decision yet, but uh, once I get the bird going, I'll, I'll make my decision on that. So I'm going to turn the camera off, um, put this over my light box, and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, we're all set up on the light box. Uh, this is the template sheet that comes with Aaron's uh, Home Again pattern. And I have my roll of heat and bond light. I buy this at Walmart. <laughs> but I cut off a little piece just to make it more manageable for this tutorial. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is trace this little bird. And I want to make the best use of my paper. So I'm going to try to get it as close to the edge as I can. You want a little bit of wiggle room. You want, you want at least like a quarter inch all the way around. So you've got room to um, to cut it out. All right. So one of the handy little tricks that I learned years ago when tracing applique is that it's really hard. I'm going to do it over here on the sleeve to stay on a straight line. Um, it sometimes will get kind of wonky. So when I'm tracing, especially around curves. Um, I like to kind of sketch back and forth and it gives me more control and the line always ends up being exact instead of real wavy especially with this heat and bond light because heat and bond light has um, a texture to it and your pencil just kind of wants to go everywhere but with the sketching um, it just makes a straighter line. I don't know why that is, but uh, whoever figured this out was pure genius in my book. But even on the straight lines, I do a little sketch. That's what I call it anyway, where you're bouncing back and forth. <clears throat> Now you can use um, a marker, I suppose, if you wanted to, but I've always used a pencil to trace my applique shapes. But if you've got a steadier hand than I do and you're better at tracing, you know, give it a shot. But I think this is the best way to go. So I'm going to finish tracing up the, out this bird. Well, there's not much left. I guess I'll just go ahead, huh? Just go around his head. Or her head. What do you think? Is it a boy or a girl? Well, since there's two of them on the the center, the medallion part, um, I'm assuming that it's a boy and a girl, huh? Um, now I do windowing, which means um, I will cut when I cut out this applique. I will cut inside this line and cut out a bigger portion of the body. So I'm going to move this up here onto his um, belly, and I'm going to trace that beak or that little cheek and this is a little tool that I got at Office Depot and it helps me trace the circles exactly and it's a lot quicker boom it's done alright now let's go down here and get the wing 
And it's the same, I'm going to be the same process, but I'm going to turn the ca camera off. I'm just going to sketch, sketch, sketch. And when we come back, you'll see my sketches. Okay, you're not going to believe it, but um, I had to go back and trace them again because I cut them out without the camera on. I was just talking to nothing. But anyway, here's my my little bird and the wings. And I also wanted to show you this. Um, I used this tool to help me trace around the wings here also to get those nice and straight. Um, I think it was this one. Anyway, it's just another, you know, to keep it straight. Now if we can cut straight, that's the main thing. So I'm going to rough cut out these shapes. You, didn't, you know, you want to stay kind of close because wherever this um, paper touches on the fabric, you know, you're going to have a sticky adhesive and um, you, you want to waste as little fabric as possible. So I'm just rough cutting around the outside about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more. Just eyeball it. And I'm going to make a little snip. Well... And this is uh, called windowing. The reason why we do this, and I don't always do it, um, but on quilts that I intend to use to cuddle up with, I like to window the pieces. Not that heat and bond is stiff, but, um, you know, it is a, a little. It adds a little bit of body, let's say. Um, so we just want the very edges, because that's all that really needs to be um, on there anyway, is the very the very edge. That's all that needs to be stuck on the fabric. So we'll come in here and get the little birdie. Get that out of the way. And I know some people are really afraid to do um, raw edge applique, the fusible. They're afraid that it's going to fray. But if you follow the directions on the heat and bond light, um, it's not going to fray. I've never had a problem. Sometimes I don't set them, set the heat well enough, or I don't leave the iron on the the fabric long enough, and my pieces will want to come up off the fabric. And all I have to do is go back in, um, apply the iron to it again, and let it set a little bit longer so it fuses properly. And that's the only issue I've ever had. I've never had the pieces come flying off of a quilt. It just <laughs> doesn't happen. Alright, so I'm going to cut that out. And then we'll go in and window the little bird. Now, um, I will have to make two of these when I do the medallion, but there's only one template. She only gave me one template. So I'll have to turn that template page over and trace from the back side on that second bird. That way I've got a bird face in each direction. When I get done here, we'll head over to the ironing table and I'll show you how to fuse it and then how to cut it and why I love these scissors so much. If you're interested in this pattern, um, you can go over to Erin's blog. It's called One Piece at a Time. Um, today, as a matter of fact, is the first day she will be giving some um, quilting tutorials or applique tutorials. Erin does turned edge applique, but she turns the edges before she um, puts it on the fabric. I've used her method many times, and it always turns out beautifully. She has a lot of great tips, and to be honest, she is where I learned to do hand applique. And um, I thank her for letting me help you guys do raw edge applique. So let's let's head over to the ironing table. Okay, we're over at the ironing table, and we're going to take our little bird that we've cut out, and we're going to put it with the fusible down. Of course, your lines will be up, and we've got that iron set on a medium heat. And we'll just come in and real quickly press. Now I've always flipped mine over and pressed again from the back and set it off to the side and let it cool. And we'll bring over another piece. Now remember this is the back side of the fabric that we're ironing on. So I'll put my little circle up there. 
Give them a little press. One, two. One, two. Okay, now we're going to do the wing. I'll bring it up here. I've got a salvage right there. I'm trying to get right to the edge of it. Use as much fabric as I can. And give it a press. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. And you may need to, to do it a, a little bit more. Now, you don't want to ha have steam. And you don't want to have it too hot. Or you'll melt it so much that it will absorb right into the fabric and it won't adhere to your piece. Okay, now you're probably wondering about my beak. I didn't cut out a piece for the beak. And I think I've decided I'm going to use this. Let's give that a little press. Got little fuzzies in here. So this is a little bitty scrap piece of heat and bond and I've decided that um, I'll just iron that on there and I might be able to get two beaks out of this one little piece. So we'll just one, two, turn it over, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. There we go, we're good. Now you want to let those cool because um, they get kind of hot and we'll go ahead and start cutting them out. Now this is where, I'll have to cut out the circle first to show you why I like these K. Buckley scissors. They are serrated. So when I cut out my pieces, and please excuse um, my fingernails, <laughs> they, they aren't pretty, I don't get manicures, they are what they are, okay? You might not even notice until I said something about it. So I'm going to cut right up to that line. Now I am using my scissors, I'm pulling my scissors back and staying on that line. I am not um, moving my left hand. I'm only moving my right hand that I'm cutting with. And what happens is I can control it better and stay right on that line to get the most perfect circle that I've been able to get by hand cutting. And I take a little bit of extra time with these circles because especially the little circles it is so noticeable when you get off. Um, Let's look. And it's not 100% um, complete, but it's as close as I'm going to get. So, and I do the same thing basically with all the shapes. I'm going to cut right on that line. I can go a little bit faster with the bigger shapes because this is very forgiving. Once it's on your quilt, um, nobody's going to know if you didn't cut exactly on the line. But anytime you're cutting out applique shapes, the ideal um, cut is to try to cut that line right in half. And it's up to you as how perfect you want it to be. All right, so here, here again, I can just pull it with the scissors instead of moving it with my left hand. I find that it makes, it does the curves a lot better that way for some reason. I don't quite understand it, but um, it's something that just happened over time. Nobody ever told me that. I just started doing it on on, on my own. Um, I find it to be the most accurate way to do curves. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you do the windowing on the pieces, it makes it a lot easier to just stick your thumb underneath there and pull it off. And you can see that that shiny is still on the edge of that wing. And that's your adhesive. You do not want to touch your iron to that. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right. <coughs> then our little birdie. I'm going to cut out this little birdie and then come back and show you how to put the pieces on the background fabric. Okay. I'm back. and I'm going to take the... One more piece here to take the backing off of my little cheek and oh, I forgot my beak so I'll have to, to cut my beak and I'll show you that I am just going to cut a little diagonal um, and let's see we'll come in here and cut a little diagonal there and there's a little beak piece, and I can just pull that off. If you have trouble 
getting the, the paper off of the back, you can score it with a pen, <coughs> which I may have to do with this itsy bitsy little bitty beak. Well, maybe I got it. Oh, I, it wants to come. It really does. Well, fiddle sticks. There it is. I just can't get a hold of it. My old fingers. There we go. Woo! We got it. So there's our little beak. All right. Pull all that off to the side. Now we're ready. I'm real organized, aren't I? Okay. So we got our little bird on there. I found her little beak. And I'll take it and just stick it right under there. Oh, how cute is that? Right? And in the wing. Isn't she cute? Let's bring that down a little bit so it looks like a cheek instead of an eye. <laughs> ah. Straighten her up a little bit. Okay. Now, Heat and Bond Light says to hit this for seven seconds. No steam. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand. And we'll move it over. <clears throat> one, one thousand, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's flip this girl over. Hit it from the back for about another seven seconds. Now remember, this is on a medium heat. You don't want it really, really hot because if it's super hot, your piece will, the glue just soaks right into the fabric. But anyway, there's our girl. Isn't she just adorable? Now all we got to do is stitch around it. But what I do is I will let this cool. I'll go get a drink, go walk the dog or something, and let all my pieces cool, to, and uh, then start stitching them down. So I'll be back with you guys as soon as this cools down. Okay, we're at the machine. I've threaded my um, machine with um, a light blue Aurora Fill thread, and I have pink for the little cheek part. Now I'm going to say um, I'm not a big fan of Aurora Fill. And I'm going to zoom in here and show you why. See how that's all curly? Um, I've never had a spool that didn't do that, and it causes issues. But anyway, um, to do, I'm doing a tiny blanket stitch that is 7.0 wide and 4.0 long. Um, but first I need to bring my bobbin thread up. Now my bobbin thread is white. Um... Aurora fill is so expensive that um, I use a different type of thread in the bottom. So, I'm just going to test my stitches. The first thing I do is tack. And on my machine, I can just push the, the back button and it will take two stitches and then one stitch forward. It will take two stitches in the same spot and then one stitch forward. One, two, three. Well, it lo it didn't do what it said it would, <laughs> what I said it would do. One two, three. There, it did. It jumped forward. I just couldn't tell because I'm looking at the screen on my phone. Okay, so let's just test this little stitch and go really slow. And let's see if I still can't see it. So I'll pull it out here in a minute and let you see the stitch. And I'll do the tacking stitch. One, two, three. All right, and I hit the automatic cutter. Okay, and with the automatic cutter, you see that I have these tails sticking out here, so I can just cut those off, and that's tacked. It's not going to come loose at all, and there's my stitch on top. Let's see if I can get that to focus on it. You can't, um, can't see the white thread on the bottom at all. It did not pull up through. There's no puckering, so... I am not going to put a stabilizer behind my applique on these pieces. So we're ready to roll. Alright, so I'm going to pull some of that thread out. 
Let's start up here in the crook of her neck. That's a good starting place. And I'm going to put my needle down. Now I have a knee lift, but I'm not going to be using it because I have a tripod sitting in front of me and the tripod leg is between me and the knee lift. <laughs> so I'm going to push the for it to come up. And do you see my needle jump over? Well, I'll pull that bottom thread up. Hold them. I'm going to pull these off to the side. And what I'm going to do is lift this up and bring it over and take my, whoops, take my needle down in that same spot. I'm hand cranking it down and bringing that. Now watch it. It's going to jump over to the right. Up oh, there it went. It jumped. So I'm going to do that again. Cause lift that up. Put my needle in the crook of her neck. Oh, that's too far back. All right, now I'm going to do my tacking stitch, which on my machine, it's two in this one spot, and then it takes one little bitty tiny stitch forward. And then it stops. I let my finger off the button. Now when you're, you're stitching, you do not want to hit the edge of your applique because if you do that, it's going to fray. It happens sometimes, but it's just one little video fray. It's nothing to fret about. Don't fret about the frays. Um, let me see if I cover that, if you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to hold my finger there for a little bit. Maybe you can see the stitches better. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. Move the camera. Let's do this. Nope, go this way. All right. You see how I'm hidden outside of that fabric. You never want to hit the fabric. Let me get a piece of tape and put over that. I'll be right back. Okay, we got that light covered up so you guys can see what's going on down there a little bit better. Now I will say that um, I'm going rather slow for your benefit. Um, I normally go a lot faster than this. Kind of lift up my presser foot and turn it. Now you don't want to turn your fabric when the needle is down in your applique. You want to wait till it's on the outside of the applique. Otherwise, you're going to get a V in the the stitches and that just won't look good so after you get comfortable with it you can you can speed up a little bit this is how I normally roll now see that is a little bit farther out than what I want so I'm going to turn this and see if I can't uh, make up that difference I'm not going to worry about it I'm not going to go back and fix it because what's my rule it's not that big of a deal this isn't going in a quilt show <laughs> so we let little things like that go I do anyway if it were um, going in a, a national quilt show I would worry about it Now, you don't have to match your thread to your applique either. I just find that it's a nicer finish. It's the look that I like. But um, a lot of people will use a darker thread because they like the looks of that darker thread. I'm just not a big fan of it. If I were going for uh, like a, a 30s look, because a lot of the 1930s quilts were done with black thread or brown thread as um, the blanket stitch, and I just don't care for that look. I'm trying to be a little more elegant. <laughs> it's about the only thing in my life that's elegant. Uh, but if you happen, you know, to hit the edge of that um, fabric and it frays a little bit, when you're done, when you've done all your stitches, 
go back and give it a little press to press that little fray down um, to melt that you know there's a little bit of adhesive still on the back of it I generally don't go in and try to trim it because it ends up um, causing problems when I do that so I just leave it alone and give it a little press When I get to these points, I just kind of jump over the point because um, these really sharp points up here, if you try to put um, a stitch in that, it's going to fray it. So I just jump over the point, turn it, mm. Okay, let's take a look at what I've already done. Let's pull it up here and look. Can you see that? Oh, look how pretty that is. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Lovely stitches. Just lovely. I'm loving it. This thread matches perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to go right up to the tip of this, let that cross over it, and I'm going to tie it off so you guys can take a look at the, um, so I'm going to hit my backwards button, which is going to do a tack stitch, one, two, three, it jumped forward on that first, on that last one. Now you can do the same thing, if you don't have an automated machine that will do this, you can do the same thing on um, your non-automated machine. Just take two stitches in one spot and one tiny one forward and that will tie it off. So let me um, zoom out. I'm going to go in and clip those threads on the back. Making sure not to cut, cut the knot. I left a little bitty tiny tail. And then I'm going to go back up and clip the threads where I started. And there it is, just as cute as it can be, guys. Super cute. Let's see if we can get it to focus. And they're almost invisible. Look at that. And you can see where. Well, let me see. Where's my. Oh, got the camera in front of me. Where'd it go? Right there, where I got off a little bit. But it's really not that noticeable, is it? Now we get right down there on it. Somebody's that close to your quilt and they're, they're nitpicking your stitches, girl. They ain't your friend. <laughs> you just need to tell them to go on. But I think it turned out really sweet. 